You may think the media are capable only of skepticism and loathing, but think again. Journalists can love, too. Their latest crush, the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea. Kim Yo-jong, whose brother is, of course, the undisputed dictator of that Stalinist hermit kingdom, is at the Winter Olympics this week. And according to the press, she's a huge star, a bigger star even than our, pr our vice president, Mike Pence, or for that matter, a bigger star than any of the actual athletes. Don't believe it? Consider some of these descriptions. From the Washington Post, quote, the Ivanka Trump of North Korea captivates. From CNN, she's stealing the show. The New York Times says she turns on the charm. Reuters, the Newswire, meanwhile, writes this, quote, North Korea has emerged as the early favorite to grab one of the Winter Olympics' most important medals, the diplomatic gold. Ugh. Well, reporters gushed over the world's last totalitarian state. Mike Pence, who again is the vice president of the United States, was attacked for not standing up to honor North Korean athletes. Watch this. I thought was that it? Mike Pence said that it was inappropriate to make political statements at sporting events. <laughs> if you are in Korea, you need to stand up. You need to respect. stand up and show but respect. The Olympics are supposed to be the one place where politics is not supposed to play a part. That's my yeah, understanding. I, I, Well, if you're surprised, you shouldn't be. Progressives have a long and dishonorable history of supporting the world's most repressive regimes. No exaggeration. The New York Times, just to name one example, supported Joseph Stalin even as he was murdering up to 12 million Ukrainians in the famous famine there. That paper also led the cheering for Fidel Castro as he turned Cuba into a police state. In 1975, and we're not making this up, when the Khmer Rouge swept to power in Cambodia, the Khmer Rouge, the New York Times made this prediction in a headline, quote, for most, a better life. One of the worst genocides in history followed shortly thereafter. It turned out not to be true. Well, it's hard to find a dictator the left has not supported. Chairman Mao, Hugo Chavez, Idi Amin. These people seem to have nothing in common but one thing. They all hate America. Turns out progressive activists also have one thing in common. They resent their fathers. That's where their politics come from. The rest is just window dressing. Deirdre Griswold is editor of Workers World. It's a weekly communist newspaper that supports the North Korean regime, where she has visited, and she joins us tonight. Deirdre, thanks for coming on. Hello. So um, you, you're a longtime communist. You're a longtime supporter of the DPRK. You visited at the invitation of the government. You think its leaders are great. When you see CNN and Reuters agreeing with you that its leaders are great, that, that must validate you. I mean, you must cheer as you watch the Olympic coverage. I've been to both North Korea and South Korea, mm -hmm. and I'm on this program because I want to talk to the people who watch your show and make a serious point yes. that we're in the process of moving towards a nuclear war. And uh -huh. they, they have never experienced that, but the Korean people know very much what war is like, and they're not for it. And the people of South Korea don't want war any more than the people of North Korea do. And they showed that at the Olympics, when the right. op in the opening ceremonies, when they cheered with great joy the fact that the North and the South were marching together. So I, since you've been to both countries, I'm just wondering. So one is obviously the world's last Stalinist regime. It's pretty rigidly Marxist. That's North Korea. South Korea is floridly capitalist. It's a market-based economy, uh, which, of course, you reject. Which country would you rather live in personally? I won't uh, try to answer and debate you on everything you've said. This well, no, is your no, I'm not show. debating you. No, no, that's a hour. sincere question. Well, I only sincere have question. a couple of minutes. But, uh, <laughs> but what I want to talk about. You're not going to answer the question? What I, what I want to talk about is uh -huh. what I think is really of, of importance to the people of this country. That is that there's a group in Washington that really wants to push for a war. The Korean yeah. people don't want it. People here don't want a war, but they don't know what a war is like. They think you just push a button somewhere. Well, but, That's but hold, not on, true. hold on. Let, let, let me just say that I, I've never said this to a communist before, but I actually agree with you. I, I don't want a war in Good. Korea. Good. And I think there are people in Washington who are pushing for it. I think you're absolutely right there. Mm -hmm. I guess where I disagree with you is we don't know what the people of North Korea want because they're not allowed to say what they want. Oh, that's and, and I'm a little. Well, if, really? Yes, so I, I, do they have internet access there? Oh, they don't. I, okay. I've been do they? There. They know right, what's know going have. on in the world. 
They know right? perfectly well what's going on in the world. How would they know? Because it's illegal to watch a foreign movie there. Yeah, so how would they making, know? You know, making up a lot of stuff. The Is people that not true? in North Korea are very aware of what's going on in the world. North Korea has a 100% literacy rate. Did you know that? I, I got did. That yeah. figure, I got that figure from the CIA fact book. Well, I, if I've you seen want to it as well. It but if you can't read anything but the propaganda, care, of, they are okay. not in some kind of a, you know, jail. They're not. They are. They really? Are, they are people who want to get out from underneath the threat of war that the U.S. has posed ever since it, it invaded their but, country in 1950. Okay, now I, I know you don't want to debate, by which you mean you don't want to yeah. answer real questions, but let's just try a couple of them. If they're free, why can't they leave? Uh, look, people That's a fair question. go back and forth. People go back and forth. I, I, you know, you, you're taking you this whole in, in a whole other direction that shouldn't be of any significance to people here. Do, why? Well, wait, 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 wait. Why, why is it? Think, look, you're, why you're do up you here think, speaking. Why do you Hold think on. There are people uh, in Washington who are for a, a war. Why do oh, you I, think I, they're that, for a that, war? That's one of the questions I've never been able to answer in 35 years here. But I, I one question no. I've been able to answer pretty simply is: Is North Korea a free place, a place you'd want to live, or is it a prison? Do you know what the imprisonment rate in North Korea is? It's 800 per 100,000. You, you know what, what it is in South Korea? One hundred. is in the United States. Talk I'm sorry? You well, know it's what nowhere, the imprisonment rate? There, it's very you know high. The U.S. has it's nowhere more near prisoners 800, than though. any other country in the world? That's not true, actually. Oh, North yes. Korea has... No, no, that's not true. North Korea is the highest. But let me just ask no, you a question. No, no, no. I'm talking about the number of prisoners that's the highest in the world in the United States. That's, well, I, that's true. Right, okay. And the majority of So would you say the United people, States... Hold on. The majority of them are poor people, and they wouldn't be in jail if they had a lawyer to keep them out of jail. Right, right. Like Actually, so many they people all, in they... Washington and Wall Street <laughs> okay. have lawyers that so keep I guess them this out is of the, jail. So this is kind of the point I was making, is that no regime, no matter how repressive, no matter how many of its own people it has killed, is ever undefended by the left if it hates America. If North Korea suddenly became pro-American, you wouldn't support it, would you? You know that you wouldn't. You, you, you say that, the, that uh, this is a country that hates America. No, I would say that of North Korea. I think that's yeah, fair to okay. say. Having did, <laughs> did, did, did I'm North going out on a limb ever there. Come yes, I am. Over to this country and bomb us. Did they ever do what the U.S. did to Korea? Do you so think do the you Koreans think... feel good about what the U.S. did to Korea? The U.S. bombed every building over one story so in, do you during think... the Korean War. Oh, right. The so bombers do you th had to come back with a, their uh, payloads undropped because there were but no why bombs. Why do you think you no dislike... Left to Hold bomb. on. Do, do, do you ever, just a quick reality check, do you ever say to yourself, you know, I dislike America where I live I don't dislike, more than I dislike I North Korea. I don't dislike the people of this country at all. I'm but, but thinking the country about itself, them as well are. as the people of Korea. But why, why I make excuses? We should not have a war against Korea. And, and I, these I'm, people I'm in, with you there. Hold in on, Washington so on. I'm, and the Pentagon I'm with you there. who are actually well, doing the planning for such a war. Let me ask you one last question. You know there's if going you can to be do war this. games coming up against the, yeah, war Korea. Games. But let me they ask you a question. They suspended them during the Olympics. I don't want to have to cut you off. I just want to ask you one last question. It's a sincere one. we got to be worried about that. Does it bother you? I got it. Does it bother you at all? Does it make you rethink your defense of North Korea when you see its population starving and its leader dying of the obesity? The people there do you are not think? starving. That, well, they just had a they famine had a 15 famine years ago. Some years ago. You know, this is a country that was left in ashes. In oh, ashes it's our fault. just a okay. generation and a half ago. They well, so is South their Korea. Why, why, they how did South Korea get so country. built up? They rebuilt their country. They uh -huh. have. You know, they, they, if you look at the Koreans, right. they're the healthiest looking people in the world. They're the best. If you look at those Except Koreans. for the tapeworms and the uh, no. <laughs> tuberculosis. You know, you've got they're awesome. You know what? You've you should go get some dental work. You are, you are <laughs> telling know. people lies about uh, the world, and that's what your station does. And I'm right. not surprised by that. At well, we're all. glad to have and you on for some truth, Deirdre. Thank you so much. It's great to see you. Dr. Alan Mendoza is executive director of the Henry Jackson Society, and he joins us. Tonight, uh, Dr. Mendoza, thanks for coming on. Um, a pleasure to be with you. So do you think we're overstating it when we describe North Korea as, um, as basically a prison? No, of course not. It is basically a prison. Uh, this is the, the world's most repressive regime. It is indeed a prison camp. You can't leave. To, I don't know what your last guest was, was sort of smoking before she came on, but I have to say it's the most extraordinary set of, uh, uh, of sort of points, disparate points put together in a, in, in a, in a sort of a, a, a policy statement. Look, this is a state which exists and runs on terror. It runs on terror. It runs on torture. It runs on imprisonment. And it runs on ensuring that 
that the people who live there are at the uh, beck and whim of the uh, of the regime. It is it is indeed a prison camp. You're absolutely correct. So why the impulse? I mean, you've you've watched the reaction of the international left to a lot of these different regimes over the years. Why the impulse to defend, to side with, to make excuses for regimes that are indefensible simply because they hate the West? There is an extraordinary romance uh, that the left actually believes in when it comes to these regimes. It starts with the idea that actually we can convert these people somehow. Um, it, it goes along the lines, actually we have something in common with them. I think you're right to highlight the fact that the US is frequently uh, seen as the sort of chief enemy of these regimes is actually something that actually appeals to the left as well. Yes. And take those things together, you, you look at those two things together and you realise that you, you get a kind of complete opposite to what would happen if it was a right-wing regime. If that was the case, the left would be first out onto the street saying we must announce them, we must ignore them. But when it comes to someone uh, who is purportedly anti-American in that kind of way, they have a very different view. It's sort of strange, though, if you, if you live in the West, in the UK or in the United States, and enjoy the fruits of the society, why devote your life to destroying it? I mean, does only the West does that, right? Well, absolutely. And, and here you come to the crux of the matter, which is why is it the citizens of our countries who enjoy free societies, who enjoy the ability to argue, who enjoy the ability to discuss, will go out onto a limb to defend dictators, repressive regimes who prevent their citizens from doing that. It is yes. an extraordinary, extraordinary turn of events when that happens. What you should be seeing, what true liberals should be doing is arguing for the um, inhabitants of those countries who are subjected to human rights abuses, G getting them the same rights that they themselves enjoy, but you don't have that at all. No, it's a good point. It's why fathers should be nice to their children, otherwise they'll grow up to be progressives. They'll hate you, and they'll make a whole politics out of it. Alan, thank you very much. A pleasure.